welcome back. Now we are at a very interesting stage here. Yes. Uh, you have had um, some years at uh, a year and a half, almost, mm -hmm. almost two, at uh, the Ministry of Transport, right. and then now you've been offered an opportunity. Oh, you have sort of resigned, yes. and now you are en entering yeah. the navigators. Yes, take us through that. Okay, so I the first traumatic experience about that is because. When I was in the government, I was supporting my family financially, you know, paying for school fees for my sister. Oh, when you mentioned family, I thought, oh, there's already <laughs> wife and children. <laughs> um, I thought you fast forward yeah. to a place where we can. Okay, all right. <laughs> and uh, so when I get invited to join the navigators, mm -hmm. now I'm moving from high salary <laughs> to really fundraising mm -hmm. for my upkeep. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they not they asked you how much money you wanna earn, fifty thousand, or they say okay, raise it from your friends. So is this happening? Yeah. Okay. So whoa. So there was no like, in fact, we deducted the different costs and the balance from what you raised. Man. So that's uh, the model. That's the model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have any like, you know, paying salary. It's like how much you wanna earn. There's some skills. Mm. But whatever skills you raise up from your friends. Mm. And so, of course, my family gets freaked out. Mm. Because then this guy in the university is... Yeah, full engineer. Yeah, mm. so what is this story about mm. having to fundraise mm. back mm. for your upkeep? And some of the people you have to fundraise from are yeah. the same people you've been, now, you've been supporting before. Yeah. 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 So, of course, uh, my brother gets... Crazy about this, he was a friend that told the general then, Matthew Mooney. Yeah. He goes to the AG and starts finding out about who is this, you know, organization that is misleading my brother and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty furious. Mm. I remember my mother crying, my sister crying because now they feel like uh, they actually thought I was going crazy. You've I, been brainwashed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's one of those cults you get in front of cults. Yeah. Uh, and um so it was a bit hard for me and, and I spent about six months really praying and asking God is this is this for real mm. or am I making a serious blunder? Mm -hmm. Um yeah, because you know, of course it did part in my career as well, mm. because now then after I finished the navigator still mm. And you're signing up for the navigators with an initial period of two years. Two years, yes. So it's sort of like a train. Yes, a training. Mm. It was a two-year training. Two-year leadership. Yeah, it's a leadership spiritual foundation. Mm -hmm. Really understanding the Bible, studying the Bible, and get to understand the Bible better and right. live it out. Right. So, but you know, there are no guarantees after that. Mm -hmm. After that, I either have to go back to my engineering, which is what I thought I would do. Mm. Uh, because I thought this was a two year and go back. Mm. Uh, but, you know, it had uh, implication in terms of my Yeah. And so, I struggled a lot about that. Mm -hmm. Some of my cousins either had gone crazy. In fact, I was saying that one of these days you see my walking in the streets without clothes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I spent a lot of time praying. Mm -hmm. And I still remember really God speaking very, to me very clearly on uh, Proverbs 8, 9, and 10. Mm -hmm. And the basic essence of that verse is if you ever have to make a choice between wisdom mm. so it's a scale mm. on one side of this scale have a lot of gold right gold and silver yeah i mean this aside have wisdom mm. and the knowledge of god mm. if if mike you ever have to make that choice mm. always choose wisdom as opposed to gold the golden fire. yes yeah because it says that wisdom is more precious than rubies and uh, anything that you will never desire. Mm. And so I think that sort of, that verse for me killed it. Mm. Because it was, yes, what I really need more than anything else mm -hmm. is wisdom and having a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Once I get that right, mm. the other things will follow. Mm -hmm. It's like my true love. Mm. So then I made that decision mm -hmm. um, to come and start with the navigators. This is around 19. Uh, this must have been around uh, uh, seven, 
about 90. 90, 90. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I make I make that decision mm-hmm. and uh, immediately um there were four people that were mentoring me. Mm-hmm. There was a Kenyan couple called Dennis and Irene, mm-hmm. who then because they moved to Eldoret asked me to move to Eldoret as well mm-hmm. because that's where they were going to move for their ministry. Mm-hmm. Then there was another uh, American guy called uh, Bruce Neger from mm-hmm. Iowa mm-hmm. and his wife Trisha. Mm-hmm. There was another lady, American also, uh, called Ruth Kinitzo, mm-hmm. and another guy called uh, Mark Bokat, he's also from the US. Right. And eventually, another lady called Esther Warero, who is a Kenyan, mm-hmm. might now work in the US. Mm-hmm. So, I'm being mentored by these four individuals, mm-hmm. even as a non navigator staff. Mm-hmm. And you know, that totally like was a second phase of my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bruce taught me a lot of a lot of things, skills that I have now. Mm-hmm. He taught me how to play chase. Mm-hmm. He taught me how to ride a motorbike. Mm-hmm. He taught me how to play squash. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was in his house every day. Mm-hmm. And as we were studying the Bible, mm-hmm. we were just living life. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's just basically uh, helping me with some basics. So the way I look at life now and interpret, you know, when I think about excellence, mm-hmm. when I think about coaching, mentorship, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A lot of that was because of Bruce's influence. It has a lot to do with yeah. the time spent. Yeah. Mm. And then, of course, Dennis told me. Dennis was an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and uh, he was a visionary. Mm. And so, him and I, mean as well, I learned a lot. Thank you. Yeah. All right. mm-hmm. So, I think the basic, those, those years, and I would call maybe, uh, so if you think about uh, maybe my campus life, mm-hmm. And because uh, what I've noticed is that my life seems to change every ten years in cycles of ten years. In cycles of ten years, right? So the university, we pick the university, the government uh, as being one sort of stage of my life. Mm-hmm. This is the stage now with the navigators again. You pick it like ten years, mm-hmm. um, when the university help me develop some basic professional competencies mm-hmm. and understand who I was as Mike. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, um, I got everything I need to do about engineering, exploring. Mm-hmm. I did astronomy in the university, mm-hmm. which was, uh, uh, even now I find it. So like when, mm-hmm. when I don't know, when you want to get away and refresh yourself, I don't know what you do. Mm-hmm. But for me, uh, when I want to sort of go back to a world, my own world, mm-hmm. then I go into space, quantum physics, mm-hmm. multiverse, stuff that only mostly I know mm-hmm. and I can't talk outside because people think I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. But that's what that phase of my life helped mm-hmm. me understand that. I would say, okay, fine. Yeah. I've sort of have the basics to understand what mm-hmm. happens in the universe and so forth, mm-hmm. quantum mechanics and quantum physics and so forth. Yeah. But now I think this other phase. Uh, develop more the softer side of myself, mm-hmm. the mentorship. And I think this what these mentors did mm-hmm. is to mentor me and begin sort of uh, exploring who I am spiritually mm-hmm. uh, and emotionally mm-hmm. and basically uh, communication skills, right. rational skills. Mm-hmm. So I think a lot of what I do now mm-hmm. is based on what those guys mm-hmm. mentored me in the love of The seeds they dropped and the out. It interesting um, because also that goes back to what you had mentioned earlier yeah. uh, about what uh, I think it was Paul Stanley. Yes, I mentioned to you about yeah. the twenties. Yes, the thirties. Yeah, is it Paul Stanley or somewhere you read? Yeah, about the twenties. Yes, Paul the, Stanley. Yeah, the, yes. the stage where yeah. the uh, you develop who you are. Mm. The thirties being the stage yeah. where you develop your gifts, yes. your spiritual gifts. Yeah. That's coming very alive yes. in this story, yeah. you yes. know, uh, exactly yeah. the definition that you give yeah. right now. Yes. That in this, yeah. here you're in your late 20s, yes. early 30s, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. and this is where a lot of these yeah. soft yes. skills and yeah. spiritual gifts yeah. are coming to, yes. to, yeah. to, to, to uh, being yeah. seeded, but yes. are also being yeah. watered. Absolutely. Uh, very yeah. powerful. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so how long do you stay at the Navigators? Well, I, I think I stayed, um, I, I think approximately 10 years. 
Oh wow. Yeah, about it significantly yeah, it was. It was. And so I think uh, when in the twenties I'd been, you know, the university stage, mm -hmm. it was more of my talents, mm -hmm. my intellect, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm an engineer, mm. you know, and uh, so I'm doing roads and so forth. Mm. In this stage, I begin asking more questions about my spiritual gift. Mm. Because then, uh, it's like an identity place and I'm asking, okay, fine. I know Bruce, I know Ruth Kilotone, I know Dennis, but who is Mike? Mm. And what is really are my core strengths? Mm -hmm. How are how my made up mm. as a person? Mm. Uh, so I did lots of like spiritual gift tests, mm -hmm. I, I then realized that uh, I'm gifted in, um, in leadership. Mm -hmm. um, leadership and the leadership part, the way it comes out is the ability to be able to articulate a future vision. Mm -hmm. um, because I then realized I didn't know before, mm -hmm. you know, I would go into a place and people will be talking about many different things mm -hmm. but they have the ability of being able to put all this information together mm -hmm. and say you know what eh? what this means in terms of the future as a group now mm -hmm. this is where we need to go in right. the next 10 years right which is a bit to engineering because i thought you know um I thought I'm an engineer and therefore I need to do engineering work. Mm -hmm. But really what engineering is, is really basically getting a lot of data, being able to consolidate it mm -hmm. and being able to say this is what the future needs to be like. Mm -hmm. So, so that's when I relax, I realize, mm -hmm. okay, then I'm still making use of who I am as I'm my makeup. Yeah. But in terms of leadership, I think and vision part was a one thing that I realized ahead. Mm -hmm. I also realized that I had a gift of teaching actually. All right. And so, uh, so then I began putting this together at that point mm -hmm. when I'm mentoring the young guys at the, you know, within the navigators. Because now I began mentoring students at the university, mm -hmm. but all these things began kept coming together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. And what, um, what are the events then that lead to the next part of your life? Mm -hmm.